Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Love, the male inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. Welcome to your Mind University because you have stumbled onto the podcast where we take one character, construct, or set of questions from popular culture and teach you everything you need to know about them in about an hour. And today, my friends, it's a mailbag question. Yes. So we're going to teach you about our opinions. Yes. And just to let you know, we are uh, still experimenting with our new mics. Thanks to uh, Dr. Jeremy Skinner. I've upgraded him to a doctor for donating to Operation. Uh, get us new mics. I forgot what the name we called it. Um, Operation New Microphones. Operation New Microphones. So uh, some of the test settings are not uh, perfect, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Here's a fun fact. Uh, we do have a new way to record the podcast. We're using one of these road po- pro casters whatever you want to call it um and it comes with sound effects and the audience is going to hear them but ashley won't because ashley's not wearing her headphones so uh here's a round of applause for all of you for listening today <laughs> actually that's laughter i pressed the wrong button <laughs> i'm hoping i was really hoping it was a round of applause for me for not wearing my headphones oh that's, that's right so folks funny. you're gonna get a um, oh boy i don't know that man's name so never mind who's the radio guy who swears a lot and talks about Howard, genitalia thank howard you stern yeah I'm like, we're gonna get howard stern level entertainment oh yes you are you're gonna, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna you're gonna feel like you're straight in a D, a morning radio show here you go here's applause for all of you listening yeah is that actually applause <laughs> oh it's going it's it's perfect oh wow yeah and i have a couple uh surprise special effects coming later I'm so terrified. All right. Uh, so, of course, this is normally the podcast where we, you know, go into a character or construct in a little bit less than an hour. But today we're not doing that because, again, we every time we ask you guys for questions, and it's something I think we're going to do at least every quarter, you guys overwhelm us with so many amazing questions that we don't want to cut any. And we made it into two episodes. We, didn't. <laughs> we did cut questions if they were repeats. Or if they were questions that we had answered in our previous mailbags. That's the only reason that we didn't answer questions this time. That is correct. That is All correct. right. So shall we jump right in? Let's do it. So we're going to start off with Patreon. Amazing patrons who support us over at patreon.com slash Jawan and uh, literally keep this podcast afloat with their collective effort. And our first question comes from I don't get it, you send who says, with the popularity of Tom King's vision and the return of DC's Strange Adventure, do you think that Marvel could try a similar approach with some of their cult characters, i.e. Dazzler and Firestar, via a miniseries or an anthology, book club suggestions, Mark Wade's Archie? Uh, you know, friends, we abandoned the book club this year when COVID happened yeah, because we had yeah. nothing to tie into. Um it is something that's currently pinned. Book Club may or may not be coming back. Well, I'll tell you this. Book Club is going... We will still read books, and we'll call it Book Club, but we found that keeping it... Doing it, like, once a month was impossible for and, our schedules. And it made... it made. Also, the schedule of the show a little more difficult. Yeah, it made it so. So we'll do it every once in a while, but it's not going to be with any regularity anymore. Yeah, and, and, I mean, unless you unless we make a Patreon level and you guys want to fund it, or I, I don't know, we we haven't figured out that yet. Yeah, um, but I love the suggestion of Mark Waits Archie because that that book is sure. exceptional. So, do we think that uh, Marvel is going to be open to like a black label type approach to some of their characters? Yeah, sure. Uh, I would love to see it. Uh, they stated Dazzler and Firestar. I don't think Dazzler is interesting. That's one of my hot takes about comics. I okay. know. I know Dazzler is very popular. Uh, she, um, a lot of people like her. A lot of people yeah, like her. a lot of people do like her. Um, Firestar is a character I know exactly nothing about, except that they exist. Yeah. So having said that, they might be two excellent characters for that type of approach because that is something that. Um, Tom King has done really, really well is, uh, even though I've been a Vision fan for a long time, I don't think Vision was on a ton of people's radar, um, and Adam Strange kind of the same, kind of the same thing. So I definitely think that there is room in all comics for all types of books, the more mature black label type approach, uh, but especially for YA. I think that's where you want to focus. Yeah. YA. Great question. Uh, Next question is from David A. Skelton, fellow Los Angeles County resident oh i didn't know that oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's like just north he's a of long us. time uh mine university long time so, friend uh, thank you david says my middle child came up to me with a story idea for ya that i thought i'd throw at you what do you think of a poison ivy centric dc zoom like swamp kid rewrite that shows how her point of view actually isn't all that evil and uses her adventures as a way to inspire people to care more about the earth 
Maybe a superintendent in charge of construction as the villain. At the moment, we're calling it Poison Ivy versus the Homo Sapiens. All just for fun, but they need a YA story like that in this actual DC Zoom line. Sounds good to me. Write it. I mean, yeah, David, that's a great pitch. There's nothing I can. There's nothing else I can say. Um, Sounds great. Call her. Um, I don't know. Red Rose. Greeny. Thorn. Green lady. Call her anything else. Plant lady. Uh, yeah. I mean, truly, call her plant lady. Wild flower. Give her purple hair instead of red hair. I mean, my dude, if you and your friend and you and your uh, uh, child want to work on this, look, I will say, yeah, you sh- I think you should do it, Jason. I'd be happy to help. I will say that I think you've come up with a pretty good foundation for a great story. I don't think it has to be a poison ivy story. Um, also. Don't 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 write it as a poison ivy story. You'll never be able to publish it. But uh, yeah, I think it sounds really good. Go for it, man. I would also say if you have not read Harley Quinn Breaking Glass, which is definitely a little more mature, it's more of the zoom side, less of the ink side. Uh, poison ivy does appear in that. Oh, is uh, that what he meant with the, when he said zoom? Yeah, so zoom was I think the younger those, one. Those imprints are both. It's now they're just now DC, DC kids. kids. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I, I first I was like, is he talking about a Zoom call? What is he? <laughs> um, but in in Harley Quinn Breaking Glass, Poison Ivy does appear. Uh, she is a character of color, and her family owns an urban garden. Um, oh, that's cool. She's definitely not a villain. She's like Harley's best friend. Um, that book is a little more mature, but I think like a, a truly like young reader, all ages yep. environmental book, very cute. Well, David. This is what I have to say about your pitch. You're getting some great A applause there, David. (laughs) Enjoy it. Take a bow. I think they took bows. I saw them. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, Yeah, my computer keeps closing up while I do this, so we're going to... All right, next question comes from Joshua Atkinson, who says... If you were in charge of the Matt Reeves Batman movie, well, then it would be called the Jason Immon Batman movie. Yeah, I'm not Matt Reeves. <laughs> when would you introduce, I just think he means the Batman. I, I like. know, I know, but it's fun to, it's fun yeah, to yeah. have fun with him. Uh, you would, Hold on, I got a perfect sound effect for that too. Okay. It was a rim shot, actually. I, this, what does that sound like? But um, but shh. Oh. Or it sounds like this. There it is. Uh, you guys, I would call that a drum roll. I guess I even mean, though that's not well, what it it's is. Just like the rim shot's a but a but. Yeah, but a rim shot's like a, when a basketball doesn't go in the net. <sighs> Good God! <laughs> um, if you were in charge of the Jason Inman Batman movie, when would you introduce Robin, and which Robin would you choose, and how old would you make him? Um, there are female Robins. Thank you very much. I would choose the first movie, and at the end, I would have Bruce at a circus witness Dick's parents' death, and I would make him twelve years old. I would. Yeah, I want to hear about. I want to hear from you in, on this one. In movie two, I would have Batman two. Batman. Ashley Robinson's Batman two. Uh, only if Ashley Robinson gets to play a character in it. Batman, the Ashley Robinson cut two. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play Kate Kane and Barbara Gordon and Carrie Kelly. That's oh, how you know it's an Ashley Robinson in, production in the same movie that you're directing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, anyone who's oh ever works with me as a director knows you're, that I'm okay. a very bad director. Okay. I don't know if you're going to get that. You're going to turn the Batman into like an Eddie Murphy joint where you like you're in makeup and CGI for all the characters where you literally play the entire main cast. Did Eddie Murphy pioneer that before Tyler Perry made a career doing that? Yes. Cool. Yeah. I'll um, take that. that. I got some respect for Eddie Murphy. Eddie, sure. Have you never seen The Nutty Professor? No. Okay. So there were two of them. Isn't he... A person of considerable size in that? Yes. And that's supposed to be the joke? I believe it's Nutty Professor, and then it's Nutty Professor 2, like something, the clumps. Electric They're called the clumps. Boogaloo. Uh, I hope, I wish. <laughs> but, um, so, anyways, um, he plays the entire clumps. He plays the main character, the Nutty Professor, because the whole joke is that he invents a serum that makes him skinny. Mm. And then he plays dad, he plays mom, he plays the sister, he plays the brother. No, and Jason, I, you got it wrong. I only want to play three characters, not five. And I believe he <laughs> plays, no, no, the young nephew is like the only other real actor in the entire clumps. Uh, so he plays the five characters. No, I just want to play three characters. <laughs> but, but still, you're kind of making the Batman into the nutty professor. Sure. <laughs> Why not? 
Um, I will not be at a fat suit because people's size is not a, a place for comedy. Um, but I would introduce at the beginning of the second movie, yeah, whatever his first big conflict or or mission or undertaking or case is, I would have him reach out, maybe make Alfred be the one to reach out because this is what I thought they were going to do in the DCEU for a long time. Um, and I would introduce Dick Grayson as an adult Nightwing. Now the problem is, mm, so it's Robert he's, Pattinson. He's been out there for some years. Robert Pattinson is in his how 30s, old is Robert 30s? Pattinson? Thirties, late thirties, mid thirties. Keep talking. Keep talking. Um, so the oldest I could reasonably have a Nightwing be would be a, a late teens, right? Um, maybe early twenties, like a Robert Bruce, Pattinson is thirty four. Thirty four. Okay, so like if he was twenty one, because you would legally be an adult. And ado- and got a ward or adopted a kid. I mean, it could be a teenager, but probably not. But I would really want to go straight to Nightwing. And Interesting. I w- and I would want a more mature Nightwing. Um, so if he's 34, let's even say it's like a 16-year-old Nightwing who's living at boarding school. Mm. Um, because the split, we've seen Batman and Robin in media before. Yeah. And the split between Nightwing and Batman and Dick and Bruce, I think you could do it even with that age gap. I think that's a more interesting thing to explore. And it, it removes Robin for the aw shucks chum role and would allow him to stand as his own hero. So that's where, that was my like first instinct on how to introduce a Robin. It's interesting. I like it. Okay. Do you have any any ideas, any inklings? I have an interesting pitch that I just came up while you were talking. Perfect. Um, let's treat the Batman movies like the X-Men First Class trilogy. Okay. So now I think they were not successful with um, that idea because, you know, they didn't take... Look, Dark Phoenix was set in 1992. But there I was, mean, they play fast and loose with time, but as do all Marvel but exactly, movies. But there, were, but there was nothing in 1992 that, that could have been set in any year. It might as well have been set now, truly. Exactly. It was the same with Apocalypse. Apocalypse was supposed to be in the 80s. And besides like a scene of like, hey, we're at the mall, it didn't really have anything to do. The only one that actually had anything to do with anything was the first one, First Class, because they were specifically about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. So I would say instead of being about specific events... The first movie, yeah, let's have Batman. Let's have young Dick Grayson. Let, that's my thing. We've never seen Dick Grayson. Like, we've never seen Dick Grayson Robin. So let's do some version of that. That's movie one, okay? Mm-hmm. It's, it is, Batman's been around for two years. So, I don't know what it is. Some version of Dark Victory. But, like, we see Dick Grayson become Robin over the course of the movie. Um, that's what the movie, the movie is Robin's origin story because we've seen Batman's origin story a billion freaking times. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Um, then let's hop, let's hop 10 years. Let's Ah. see Batman 10 years later. Guess what? Robin is now Jason Todd. We have an adult Nightwing. And if you want to do it, you could do Death in the Family. This could be the movie where yeah, Joker that's true. Joker kills the Robin and we see it on screen. Now, that might not work in a movie. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm just coming up with this off the top of my head. So settle your role, YouTube commenters. Yeah. This video, this podcast later gets released on YouTube like a month after you guys hear it yeah, audio-wise. Like and I'll tell you what, the YouTube comments that drive me insane because they are just... I mean, I'll say this. There's a reason we don't answer them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. There's there, a reason we don't take question suggestions from YouTube. We some, take them from every other platform. There's something about YouTube yeah. where they demand, YouTube commenters demand that you have all your answers and all your story beats and all your things feed it, figured out immediately. Um, like you must know it now. And then for the third movie, mm-hmm. we could go even crazier. So now it's a Batman that's been 20 years. He's 20 years. Um, you could do the Under the Red Hood storyline. You could do... Uh, you could do inklings of what you saw at the beginning of Batman Beyond, where it was an old Bruce Wayne that can't handle it anymore, where his body is breaking down. Yeah. You could do some tinges of Dark Knight Returns. And I also think the third movie, so there's a Robin in every movie. The third movie, you could have some fun with it. And to be honest with you, I think there's strengths for all three Robins. Mm-hmm. Um, you could have Tim Drake, which would be interesting. The best Robin. You could have Damien, because you could deal with the storyline of, oh, I have a son that yeah. I never knew about, yeah. and oh crap! And to be honest with you, that would be fun because the end of the movie could be old man Bruce. Well, he wouldn't be that old, but fifty-year-old Bruce, yeah, giving the mantle 
to Dick. Sure. And Dick Grayson finally becoming Batman. And then you could spin it off again. Or you could go even crazier. The Robin could be Carrie Kelly. I mean, I think there's a good chance. I think the only three Robins realistically in contention to be on the big screen are Dick Grayson, Damian Wayne, and Carrie Kelly. I agree. I think Jason and Tim... Because they're the most unique. ...got really short-shrifted in this. Unfortunately, I think Steph was never on the table, and I think Duke was never on the table. And then if you do this, Mm -hmm. then, then what you do is you make the Batman your spine, and then you say to everybody else, like making the Justice League movies or the Superman movies, be like, hey, if you want Batman in your movie, just tell us where. Yeah, is, yeah. Is it, is, it, is it second half Batman or is it first half yeah, Batman? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I've, I predict that most of them will pick young, which is fine, but that way you get the actor. The actor gets to play 50-year-old Bruce and young Bruce. And if you have an older Bruce, you also have the potential of porting in a Robin for a couple scenes in a Justice League movie. And you also have the potential. you can develop the relationship with Superman. Yes, and you also have the potential to lead on to Batman Beyond, to all, like, I Yeah, and especially if they're drawing from the long Halloween, which it seems mm-hmm. like they are at least in name only for the first one, then Dark Victory makes a really clean choice for, like, a second installment. It's interesting because I think Batman movies have come upon the problem that exists in the Batman comic books. Um... I remember Tom King, a uh, former Batman writer, once said to me, I asked him I once, I was like, what's the hardest thing about writing Batman? And he said to me, the hardest thing about writing Batman is doing something unique that hasn't been done in yeah. the last 80 years. Yeah. He's like, that is the hardest thing because he's like, it's all been done. He's like, Batman has had four solo titles at one time. Yeah. And he was like, and he has two titles that have run almost a thousand issues. He's like, it's impossible sometimes to come up with something brand new. And I think the movies now Mm -hmm. are on that problem. I agree. If you just do a Batman movie where he punches the Joker in the face, boring. Who cares? Yeah. You have to find a way to make it unique. So Plus we've already seen the most iconic version of that. Yeah, right? We we have. You're never going to beat it. Um, And I think, you know, play with time. Mm -hmm. And use the Robins to show us that time. I do want to say, just before we finish up on this question... Uh, look, Jason and I push back against casting questions a lot, and I understand why people ask us casting questions because, like, they're fun and exciting and they're full of conjecture. But um, if we were looking for like a teen or a young uh, Robin, a young male Robin, my instinct would be uh, Maxwell Jenkins, who plays Who's Will that? Will Robinson in Lost in Space. Oh, he'd be a good pick. I think he's a really good. I think he's got a I great energy I, for Dick Grayson. I too. still think I would make all, the youngest. I would make any of the Robins is sixteen. I agree um, just for just for the ease of but I, casting. But I and would try to cast and, because of these, mm-hmm. I would actually try to cast real sixteen year olds. Yeah, I, I would agree. He's, I would he's tr- about sixteen, I think. Fifteen I would, or sixteen. And, but I would also like re- I would really look for kids with martial arts backgrounds. Of course. Yeah. Um yeah, and we would be colorblind casting would be a great choice. Yeah, who cares? Especially because uh Repentance and super white. So thank you for the question. I now mean, again, Damien should be Middle Eastern. Yes, he should be. <laughs> uh, we're going to jump over to some Facebook questions. Sure. Kyle Spencer McDonald asks, what's the weirdest comic you've ever read? Now, Ooh. weird is relative. Very subjective. I yeah. like a lot of really weird comics. The Green Lantern, which is currently being published at the time of this recording, is very weird. Yes. And when I was... Um, I, I was chatting with uh, the artist of the series, Liam Sharp, who's, Liam Sharp. Who's, who's fabulous and underrated. And I we told, should get him on the show. I bet we could. Uh, I told him I thought it was so weird, and he goes, is that a good thing? And I was like, oh, no, I mean this as a high compliment. <laughs> um, Black Hole is very weird. Uh, what's Black Hole? It's a graphic novel that's about um, a group of teenagers who live beside a poison water source and they start to mutate. What? So instead of moving away from the water source, they move into oh. the woods and they like embrace. And some of them get really cool powers and some of that's them the like shed with- their whole skin all night. That's the one with the weird cover, right? Yeah. It yeah. looks like, I-, I should pull up the writer, but it looks like. It looks like Dan Chloe's art. Dan Chloe's art. Da- it, Klaus. It's, it's, I, think you're I have no idea how to Klaus. say his name, but it's not him. Yeah. Um, that's maybe the weirdest comic I've ever read. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm going to throw out a weird one that I love is Flex Mentallo. Flex Mentallo uh, is a star weird... of uh, Doom Patrol season Doom one Patrol, and two. Yeah. Um, um, it's a weird. It, it, I love that comic book, but it, it is a weird comic book. Is that a Grant Morrison comic? Yep. Yeah, well. So- there you go. And it's a vertigo. So Black Hole, um, it was written by written and drawn by Charles Burns. Okay. Um, for which he won a Harvey Award. 
Cool. But it is very Who weird. Who is the artist again? The writer? Uh, oh, boy. I, I just said it and I already forgot. Uh, yeah. Charles loading Wikipedia page. Charles Burns. That is famously, yeah, one of the weird, a weirdo comic book. Yeah, it's very weird. There you go. Uh, so there you are. Jacob Hlavacek, sorry, said, what got you into nerd culture and what kept you in nerd culture? Um, mm. I don't know. That's a really hard question. My parents let me read Tintin and Babar comics as a child. Well, I think we all have times that we leave nerd culture. Yeah. You go on sabbatical. Um, Cause I left um, early college, late high school. Mm-hmm. And I told Me too. Cause you think, you think you're like too good for it, it or too old for or it you're, or, you're, or, to be or honest, you fully can't afford or it. Or to be honest with you, you're more interested in the opposite sex. Yeah. Or the um, same, you know, you're just like, because, I only have so much brain space yeah. and I got to do this. Um, but I got back, I talked about this in Super Soldiers. I got back because I got a comic book in a care package, and one of the comic books was Ultimate X Men. And I was like, what the hell is this? And I loved the way that Mark F- Miller reformatted it. Mm-hmm. So I immediately subscribed to all three of the Ultimates mm-hmm. Ultimate Spider Man, Ultimate X Men, and the Ultimates. And I started reading them all. I, for a long time, had the entire, I had every single issue of Ultimate Spider Man for a long time. And I sold them all when I before I came out here because I only had so much space. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's what got me into nerd culture. I mean, I do love superheroes, but I will say that there's one thing about commenting or being like one of these pundits. And I will never say that I'm a pundit at all because, you know, I want, I'm a writer. But that's a title that people, uh, people have called you that. People, people do consider you to be that. Sure. I, I will never accept it. That's fine. Um, I'm just a nerd, just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do sometimes find myself, I have to find new ways to uniquely talk about it because if you just talk about the same thing, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, it, it does become to a certain point where a movie is a movie is a movie. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter who, what superhero is in it. Mm-hmm. Like, so I do look for the uniqueness of it all. I don't know, Ashley, what, what keeps you in nerd culture, I guess? Um, For me, it usually comes down to characters, to be completely honest. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to say really quickly, because you, you mentioned Super Soldiers. Please read Super Soldiers. It's very good. Yes, it's my book on Amazon. JasonEmmon.com slash store if you I want I think there might be a, a link in copy. the... There, yeah. there is a link in the show notes. Yeah, JasonEmmon.com slash store. We'll get you a signed copy. Yes, that is true. Um, also, if you didn't know that story that Jason told, that's also the reason why we run the comic drive for service members. Yes. Uh, it's because of that experience. We also should put this out there in the world. I've seen some people asking about it. We're none... We're figuring out what it might look like this year. Or if we're pausing it this year, yeah, we might because we might not have the resources we well, normally have to make it a, we, make it happen. Quite honestly, in the world of COVID nineteen, we may not be able to do it. Yeah, because I don't. To be honest with you, I haven't talked to Operation Gratitude. Anything yeah, soon. that's a conversation I, we have to have with them. I don't know if they'll accept that our donations. I agree. So I don't know if they have people making packages right yeah. now or as many people. We, so we we're figuring that we might have to put it on pause this year. But it would just this. be a pause. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it'll never go away. But yeah, so my my thing about what's kept me in nerd culture for a long time it was it was Tim Drake. Yeah. Um because talking about Tim Drake a lot of this episode. I know. He just, just called this the title of the episode should be Ashley talking about Ashley Tim Drake. Ashley loves Tim Drake. Um Hold on, hold on. I'm going to give you a talk about Tim Drake. I'm going to give you a harp uh, background. Here okay. You, you ready? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I think Tim Drake is the single greatest Robin who has ever existed for me. He's very meaningful. He was one of the characters I first saw myself in. When you hear that later, you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to listen to myself talk later. That's what I do for fun. Um, yeah, so I read a lot of comics when I was really, really young with no idea of what continuity is because you don't care when you're young. Nope, you don't care. I kind of got out of it in my like preteen era because I desperately wanted to be a teenager and then I became one and realized it was trash. Sorry if you're a teenager. It's I don't, I don't really know what that means, but sure. Well, I spent a lot of my youth hearing that your teenage years were the best years of your life. Um, Who it, told you that? They're crazy. Truly every adult oh. I knew said that. And um, for me, that turned out not to be true, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and then, so I got out of comics and I got out of like anime for a while. And then, um, when I was about to go into high school, the Jeff Johns teen Titans started up and Tim was on, I saw the first trade when it came out and I was like, well, I got to read that. 
Yeah, Tim's lead, and I loved the Titans the already. Yeah, yeah. it's and a great run. So it's, it's run. always been like a character, or a moment. But I've never left it completely. Like there was a bit when I was a teenager where I wasn't reading a lot, but I was very into like. Um, sort of gothy, sort of edgy comics that starred white girls with black hair. Uh, so, like, I read, like, Dead at 17, and I, I loved um, Hack Slash and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I guess I guess we stay in it because we don't know any better. <laughs> and because, ultimately, it uh, speaks to our souls. Sure. But, yeah. Sounds good to me. Uh, and now I want to jump back to... A Patreon question from uh, another LA County hold, hold on. We're resident. Gonna, we're going to Patreon. I'm going to open the hailing frequencies. Okay. One second. One second, Captain. There we go. All right. I can't believe I got an upgrade to Captain. I've only ever been a Lieutenant before. Oh, uh, yeah. You're full on Captain now. I'm always a commander. Uh, so this question comes from Christian Hewell, but this was the most asked question. We got this question from multiple from people? multiple people across multiple platforms. Oh, intern Cat Brego just walked into the room. Hello, sir. Hi, sweet baby angel. Uh, get over here and uh, adjust these levels. So Christian asks, I want to know Jason's top five Smallville episodes. So I'm going to fly in with a caveat here. Oh boy, here's Ashley with the caveat. caveat. I gotta have a sound effect for that. You do. Like a, can I have like a I would love a whooshing sound effect. Oh, uh, I don't think I have that. I have crickets. Uh, okay, give me crickets. Can I give you crickets? Okay, yeah. here, 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 all right, all right. Give I'm me. gonna fly in with a caveat right here. I don't know if that worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody who hates some people do hate the caveats. And to them I say this is not your show. <laughs> My caveat is, um, and I think we complained about this a lot on the last episode, lists are really hard off the top of our heads. Yes, they are. Uh, we did talk about that last week. Yeah. Lists are really, really hard off the top of our heads. And this is a list that we want to do properly. Yes. And we want Jason to have a co-host to chat with about. So we're, I think- we're going to go into this with the caveat of we're doing this episode probably next year. We're going to do more. With yeah. Some, somewhat. We haven't figured that out. And if you want to hear Jason talk more extensively about Smallville, this week's Geek History Lesson Extra podcast, which you can get over on Patreon, is going to be why Jason loves Smallville. And I'm yep. going to interview Jason um, as the person who's only seen three episodes and has been on a Smallville podcast. Yeah, that's right. Uh, about why he loves it and why we will talk more about it. Yeah, and if you head over to uh, patreon.com slash Jawin, um, guys, we do, um, like, you know, five or six podcasts a month. So you get all kinds of stuff over there and you support the podcast at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Let's do another Facebook question. Al Urutia, sorry, asks, if you could replace the superhero genre with any other genre to be a dominant genre in comics, which would you choose? A dominant genre in comics. Yeah, so they're saying that yeah, so, yeah, yeah, superheroes yeah. are dominant. Um, they, I mean, I'm going to say... They are dominant. Um, I don't know if comics work without superheroes. Oh, even fair. Even Eastern comics, even manga, even European comics... Um, Have a version of the superhero? I mean, magical fighting... Beautiful fighting girls are just... Dragon superheroes. Ball, Dragon Ball Z is superheroes. Superheroes. Yeah. I mean, even... You know, uh, so... I would say it either has to be... Of the, you got, we want to go back to like the heavy hitting genres of the golden age, right? So it's either going to be a detective, a gumshoe type detective, Pulp, pulpy, fiction, yeah, yep. because mm -hmm. that's thematically very similar, yeah, uh -huh. or romance. Romance comics were huge, and ultimately, romance Archie's a romance comic. It's funny because my pick would be science fiction, mm. and science fiction is one of those categories. Yeah. There were like you know all the Moon Men comics. Yeah, you're and, absolutely right, and stuff like that. Um. I don't think it'll ever happen. I think if superheroes go away, I think comics die. I agree. Because comics exploded with Superman. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. They're only, yeah, they're only what they are now because of Superman. Yeah, again, even in Eastern comics, because I know a lot of people are like, well, My Hero Academia, well, that's about kids with superpowers. That is, that's what that is. Yes, yes. Um, I think that was... A really interesting question. A really, really great question. Thank, I mean, it is a fair you, point. It is a, it is a very fair point because right now, when you look at comic books, it does seem to come down to two categories. It's like they're either superheroes or they're TV shows or movies that people can get made in other mediums. Yeah, and then and then on the OG end, it's like autobiographical, like that sort of Alison Bechdel yes. corner of like yeah. uh, first second. And that seems to be the majority of most comics right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that we've deconstructed the entire industry for you, I think it's a perfect time to talk to a sponsor. Ooh. 
Hey, Geek History Lesson students. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, I'm sitting here, I'm listening to this podcast, I'm all alone. What should I be thinking about? And that answer is podcast ads. Yes, that's right, because I know it's on your brain. It's on your brain all the time because it's on our brain all the time. And thanks to today's sponsor, I have the solution to your problem. You need to go to podcorn.com because it is a simple and easy to use marketplace website where this website connects you with real advertisers right now to get advertisements on your podcast. Opportunities such as host read ads, interview segments, topical discussions, and more. With Podcorn, there is no middleman, and you never give up the rights to your podcast. They're accepting podcasters of all sizes. So put your mind at ease, relax, breathe easy, because we use Podcorn as well, and we love it. So make sure you go to podcorn.com slash podcasters to start monetizing your podcast today by signing up. We love Podcorn. You should love it too. And thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode. And thanks to them for giving you an easy sigh of relief. Now back to the episode. And we're back. Hey, thank you for helping support the podcast. Uh, and also friends, we said this on the last episode, but it's really true. Playing some applause for us. Woo! <laughs> I can't hear it. No, nope, you'll hear it one day. If you want to help us and you're interested in helping us helping us financially and Patreon might be out of your scope and don't feel bad. That's happened to me before. I've had to cancel subscriptions and come back and all of this stuff. If you go to the links and the links in the show notes and you just click on them, that's a huge boon to the podcast. So yep. thank you for doing that for us. Yeah. We're going to hop over to Twitter and answer some Twitter questions right now. Cool. First question comes from Foreign Press Comics. Lovely, lovely people, lovely collaborators who say, what C or D list characters at Marvel or DC do you think deserve to be given more importance? It's so funny that we get the, we get this question a lot too. Yeah. I, I think we actually had a version of this question in the last episode where it was, well, it was we, DC. We usually say there's no C and D list character. Well, there are. They're just bad writers. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're specifically talking about Marvel. It says Marvel or DC. Oh, I'm gonna stick to Marvel because I think we did DC. Sure. I, I yeah. Um, I think the Thunderbolts. I know I talk about them a lot. I think the Thunderbolts need to always have a title. I think the Thunderbolts have earned their right to a title that always exists in the Marvel Universe, just like the Avengers, because a lot of people forget that Thunderbolts, number one, literally changed Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I don't know, underrated Marvel character. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? I mean, I think the young Avengers should also always have a mm-hmm. book, and I think that I think you could use that book – Um, to be basically a compliment to what the Teen Titans does for DC because the Teen Titans at its best addresses issues that are affecting young people. It's so interesting because Young Avengers is a title when they when they first announced it I was like this this is so stupid. And it's so freaking good. And then when I read it I loved it. Yeah um, I also think I think like Billy and Teddy uh, and Tommy I think are so interesting and they haven't figured out a way to sort of do other things with them in the universe. Like Billy and Teddy have been engaged for, I think a decade now. Yeah. And I know you want to keep them young. So we're probably never going to see them get married, but I'm like, let's do something with that. And let's let them grow a little and bit. And they've done other runs, but they've also done like sort of young Avengers type titles where like, like champions. But yeah. I, I don't think champions has ever been as good as young Avengers. I will respectfully agree, which is yeah. no, no knock on champions. Cause it's a fun book. Actually champions is pretty, it's a pretty good. Book. Yeah, pretty yeah, good. yeah. Pretty fun. But uh, it's, it just, it never hit young Avengers level. Yeah. All right. So next question comes from Wags underscore official, who says, <laughs> if you were to make a main Justice League characters into fruits or vegetables, what would they be? Oh, I love the I love the cut of your jib, sir. Or lady. I don't know. I think Wags is a gentleman, but we don't want to presume anyone's pronouns or gender the, identity. We're turning the Justice League into fruits and vegetables? Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, well, Superman's an apple. Because shouldn't Superman be a watermelon? Shouldn't he be big and strong? No, Superman's an apple because like apple is like the steady. It's like apple is the fruit that everybody eats. Mm. Like or everybody like uh, you equate it to America. So like it has to like Superman has to be like the most famous of the fruits. I guess. Sure. (laughs) 
Um, I like your idea of, I mean, to me, it's funny. I was going to say, I think Aquaman is the watermelon. No, Aquaman has to be like something that comes out of the ocean or grows on the seaside. Well, I don't know ocean fruits, so I'm sorry. You you would know that maritime lady. Uh, I'm <laughs> not a maritimer, but uh, <laughs> uh, what would Batman be? I mean, what's a, see, now you're testing our knowledge of fruits and vegetables here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What's a fruit that's dank and <laughs> kind of gro- kind of angry? Do you know what a durian is? Nope. So a durian is an Asian fruit and it's so, it's really stinky. But so. it's covered in spines, like it's sharp. Oh, good. But it's really stinky on the, it's called, like it's equated to like sulfur. That's it what, smells so that's bad. That's what Batman is then. Batman's a durian. Yep. Wonder Woman is a dragon fruit. Interesting. Uh, because white people exoticize it and it's mm. gorgeous on the inside and the outside. Mm-hmm. Flash is an orange. Why? Uh, Are oranges fast? No, but it's also, but well, they make you fast, but uh, you know, vitamin C and all that stuff like that. And they're also sure. bright and cheery. All and, right. You know, you, like when you get an orange, you're like, ah, oh, summer day. Like that's flash. <laughs> that's not <laughs> how you react to oranges. I like oranges. Who's uh, Green Lantern? I don't know. Uh, an avocado because li- it's green. A lime? <laughs> yeah, kind of tasty, but also kind of difficult. Or is he a green tomato because he's kind of a stick in the mud? Ugh. I mean, how's kind of a stick in the a mud? Tomato because tomatoes are the devil. Okay, then how's a green tomato? Um, Aquaman. I mean, I'm like, let's just make him like some seaweed. <laughs> okay. All right. Sure. Uh, and then Martian Manhunter. Is a is a is a vanilla bean or a cocoa bean? Cocoa nips. Because he loves chocolate. Yeah. All right, fine with me. That was hard. That was a great question. That was uh, way harder than I thought it would be. All righty. Uh, at Jackie Duck Pro asks, Have you guys ever considered doing a series retrospective or heck even a full lesson on Stargate or any of the subsequent series? I got this idea from Jason being pumped that Christopher Judge was teal. Yes, I was, I was pumped that Christopher Judge was teal. I have no idea. I think he, you might have meant that. I I think I wonder. I wonder if he's referring to. I think me. he means when you learned that he was Magneto. No, I think when I was. I think he learned when I. I learned. I talked to you about him being Kratos oh, in maybe. God of War, um, or maybe Magneto. Yeah, because um, I always knew he was teal. That's the first thing I ever saw him in. Um, yes, we have talked about this several times. Um, we have a very specific guest in mind. Yes. For it. And we, they're very uh, booked and blessed. And so we are trying to figure out a way to work around their schedule to make that as not a whole, probably not a whole series, well, but we would at least, and we would at least engage in a couple episodes. Yeah. And we also, uh, we're recording this very early in the morning, folks. We also, um, yeah, it would be tough to do a whole series retrospective because we haven't watched it recently. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I love those shows. I think they're great, and I definitely think they're worthy of a series retrospective. Um, I mean, we even floated a couple of times the idea of doing a Stargate podcast. Yeah. Now, I don't think that'll happen, and please don't request it because we don't have the time. Um, but um, we talked about it. We we have talked about it. So there will be something Stargate, definitely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, we do have a bunch of questions left, but I think this is where we're going to wrap it up today. Oh, okay. So can you tell us what the honor roll is? Uh, The honor roll is where you go to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five-star review. It helps us in the algorithm, and we read your thing on the air, like Ashley's going to do right now. So we have a couple international reviews to read today. First one comes from Edmonton, Canada, from Dutch Crunch 89 who says, I really enjoy how they go to great lengths and really dive deep into each character. The recommendations are awesome and well put together. They both really have a vast knowledge and do their research. Thank you. And we have a second international review from Cancun, Mexico, from Andrea Campoy, who's a lovely uh, Instagram friend as well, who says, my favorite podcast. This is the podcast that got me into podcasts in general. Every time there's a new episode, I get excited because it's what I listen to when I walk my dog, shower, or cook. I love your personal- how your personalities balance each other and make this content great, and also appreciate the hard work you put into many of your lessons. I introduced this podcast to my boyfriend, and he likes it now, so yay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sending you love from Cancun, Mexico. P.S. Please do more character chronologies like the Batman one you did. I like Superman's and Wonder Woman's. Uh, well, there are plans, Miss Andrea. There are plans. Uh, so thank you so much for those awesome international reviews and welcome to the Teacher's Lounge. Yes. Over in the corner is a table built by Mr. Afex. 
What does Mr. Apex teach? Audio engineering. Lovely. Yes. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and all the places you can listen to podcasts. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Follow Ashley on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. And also follow the podcast on everywhere on social media. Where is that, Ashley? That is at uh, geekhistorylesson.com, facebook.com slash geekhistorylesson, or on Twitter at GHL Podcast. And don't forget over at Patreon, we're going to be doing uh, the episode... Why I love Smallville. Yeah. So if you want to hear me talk about Smallville for 15 to 20 minutes, then uh, there you go. I think it's a pretty good conversation, or will be a pretty good conversation when we record it. And there you go. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you so much for uh, suffering through all the sound effects. Uh, I This has been Geek History Lesson. I am Jason Questions Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Jason, would you please dismiss the class? Class is now dismissed.